This week on RUTV, Luca presents a special edition of current events with us more into the recent occurrences of our campus. Then we visit LA Galaxy and take a look at the annual food drive. Finally, we talk with Mr. Breedy on the future of RUHS and safety measures the school plans on taking to ensure your protection. So don't look away because it all starts right now on RUTV. Good morning, Seahawks. Today is Thursday, December 14th, and I'm Sienna Lewis. And I'm Eleni Wonko. In a world that's constantly changing, it's more important than ever to stay connected and informed. Absolutely, Eleni. Now let's turn our attention to the latest happenings with Luca and current events. Thanks, Sienna. Today, we have a special edition of current events in light of the situation we had on campus last week. Two sophomores were arrested on possession of a firearm on school grounds, among other related charges. As of the writing of this script, police have made no official connection between the two underclassmen. Both students have been expelled as per school guidelines, two private security companies have been hired, metal detectors have been installed, and all-day police watch was instituted on campus as of last Thursday. There were no injuries reported or firearms discharged as school admin and RBPD took quick action to apprehend the suspects. I went out to our RUHS entry points to see how people are feeling following such a dramatic couple of days. Last week, our Seahawks went on lockdown. So, I'm here at our Redondo Union entry point asking Seahawks, teachers, and police officers about the new security measures that have been put in place since the events that happened last week. As a teacher, how was your experience with the lockdown on Tuesday? Um, my experience was just to follow our procedures, which would be we turn all of the lights off, uh, close all the doors, ask students to silence all devices, make sure that they close any Chromebooks or anything that bring light to the class. As soon as we got information over the loudspeaker, kind of shared it with the students um, and just let them know that like I would let them know anything I knew uh, and what was public would be public. How long did you actually spend in that line out in front? Um, probably like 15 minutes. So not too bad, eh? Yeah, it went fast. They said it was going to take half an hour, so. How does the police and security presence make you feel on campus today? Um, I guess I feel safer. Like, I feel like nothing's going to happen if there are, like, police and security here. Do you have any worries about something like this ever happening again? Uh, with this? Probably not. It's pretty hard to sneak something in right now, but no, not right now. No, I mean, I, I feel pretty blessed to live in a safe town like Redondo, but, uh, I don't know, it's pretty crazy kids are bringing guns on campus, but I'm safe. Crazy, I agree. So how is the RBPD making sure students are secure in the next coming weeks? Well, there's, there's a lot to it. Um, one part of it is the relationship between the school district and the police department. The relationship is strong. It's always been strong. There's constant dialogue, constant communication. There's two school resource officers assigned to our schools all the time. It's all about presence. So you're going to see a heavy police department presence at the schools so the kids feel safe being here. They can trust to go to school and have a normal day like any other day. Some advice I would give to students and parents is get involved. Get involved with the police department, get involved with the school. The police department has a ton of programs um, that, that teach the public um, how to be a better citizen, how to be a better student, um, and be a part of the overall goal of public safety and safety in our schools. I think I speak for all of our Seahawks when I say that we are grateful for the RBPD and our school administrators for their swift and decisive action to remove these threats. This is Luca Richardson, Current Events, reporting. Thank you, Luca. We appreciate you helping us to stay updated with everything that's going on. On the topic of appreciation, let's shift our focus to our local LA Galaxy and acknowledge the impact they've made on our community. This Thanksgiving, a local stadium is gearing up for the fight against hunger by hosting a massive Thanksgiving feast. Join us as we bring you the heartwarming details of how this iconic sports arena is uniting fans and neighbors alike to make a difference in the lives of those in need. We're here gathered today at Dignity Health Sports Park um, celebrating Thanksgiving early. You know, we're giving back um, to families that are experiencing homelessness right now. We're out here giving out food, drinks, desserts, galaxy items, and you know, good times for them. The most important part uh, of an event like this is bringing the community together and share a meal together in this beautiful setting. 
We focus on this event and bringing kids from homeless and abuse shelters to have a full on Thanksgiving dinner with all the toppings and everything that goes along with it, along with our staff and our players, part of our give back for Thanksgiving holiday. I've been working at the stadium for close to 20 years and this has been a tradition that we have done here almost since day one. My favorite part of the event is just building family. It's like a, a huge family here and connecting at a different level with the kids and the parents that I'm able to bring. After today, they look at me differently. You know, I think we've connected and Dignity Health Sports Park Foundation Feast makes it possible. Such an important thing you can do, you know, just giving out good energy into this earth, into the people, into the community. It's so important and, you know, they receive that and they want to do the same thing too. For IUTV, this is Cameron Gain reporting. The generosity in our community is truly inspiring. It's really nice to see everyone come together. Talking about community, let's go look at our Seahawk athletes. Hey guys, welcome back to RUTV Sports. I'm Ella Rogers. And I'm Mackenzie Baird. Our varsity girls soccer came out and dominated in this past weekend's South High Tournament with two massive wins. In game one of the tournament, they faced off against Narbonne and our girls got an impressive 15-0 dub. In game two of their tournament, they played El Segundo in a head-to-head -head match. They came out once again victorious with a 4-1 win. Their next game is Wednesday against West High. Keep up the great work and good luck, girls. This past weekend, our boys came to play. They beat El Segundo in shootouts, and they also played Santa Monica. They battled hard, but unfortunately fell short. The next game is Saturday against Beverly Hills, so be sure to come out and show some support for our boys. Our boys basketball team played at the Beverly Hills tournament this past weekend. They first faced off against St. Anthony and beat them 65-51, to giving them a 6-0 record. But unfortunately, they lost by just 9 points against Sierra Canyon the following game. Last Thursday, our girls basketball team faced off against Los Osos. They ended up winning 51-38 with outstanding performances from Ashley Minet, Ella Zimmerman, and Olivia Denisco. Their next game is against Harvard Westlake tomorrow, so come out and support our girls. Boys Varsity Wrestling competed in the Man Classic Tournament this past weekend. Senior Tate Laurie and junior Che Chatterjee both placed eighth, while junior Angel Sanchez placed fourth. Girls Varsity Wrestling also competed this past weekend at Edison High School. Sophomore Faith Bree placed second and senior Kinsley Conrad took home the championship. Great job to all of our wrestlers and keep up the great work. After a tough week without being able to practice, Girls Water Polo played in the Varsity Villa Park Tournament. They fought fiercely and were able to win two of their games against Cathedral and Yucaipa. Come down to the pool tomorrow after school to support our girls as they face off against Long Beach Poly. That's all for this week. Have an amazing winter break to all of our student athletes and go Seahawks! A huge shout out to our Seahawk athletes. Their hard work and dedication on and off the field is truly inspiring. Now, let's turn our attention to our very own principal, Mr. Breedy, with an important message to all Seahawks. Hello Seahawks, Anthony Breedy, your proud principal. Um, today, I'll be answering a few questions uh, just in regards to our campus safety um, that we all are responsible for. So before I answer these questions, um, always keep in mind the big four that I ask of each student, and that is, are you taking care of yourself? Are you taking care of each other? Are you taking care of our campus? And of course, are you taking ownership? So with that, I'm gonna take the first question. Um, how was RUHS prepared for an event like this? So, uh, as you are aware, um, last week we had um, two events, uh, unprecedented events, and what we've done in the past uh, for our campus is trained our staff members in run, hide, fight protocols. And I believe um, this also is something that many of our Seahawks have been trained in. Um, if you've been in our district for a long time, that um, you also have been trained in run, hide, fight protocols, which includes uh, locking down our campus. 
We understand that the metal detectors will probably last up until break. Uh, how do you plan to keep the campus safe after that? Yeah, so that's, that's a great question. There's going to be many meetings that are going to take place over the course of this week to determine what types of protocols we're going to have when we return back from holiday break. So um, as of right now, we're considering uh, different options, again, to increase our security measures here. And we need to discuss what that's going to look like in, uh, in shaping our campus culture. Um, but I'm, I'm confident that over the course of these past few days, the vibe is the temperature is like feels good. Students still, they want to be here. Um, they're thriving. They're in classes. They're learning. And that's the whole point of being at school. Um, and again, it takes us, all of us, the staff, the students, um, it just takes all of us to, to ensure and take responsibility of the safety measures. Take all emergency situations and drills seriously. We practice them. We can talk about them. Uh, we can be models for each other. And we can do the right thing for each other when that time comes. So again, take it seriously. Practice. Right? The more you practice, the better you get at something in inevitable situations or hopefully situations that will never occur. But at least, and this is what I heard, many students did the right thing during those emergency events. Either they said something because they heard something or during the emergency. I know many students closed doors. I know many students turned off lights. I know many students were taking this very, very seriously and staff members. And again, that's, that's the point, because we're all in this together to help each other. So thank you, Seahawks. I know this uh, is not an easy situation to, to go through, but I want you to know that we're moving forward from this, we're learning from this, and um, we're going to be better together because of this. Seahawks, remember if you ever find yourself in need of emotional support, the RUHS Wellness Center is here for you. They're always open and ready to help. You can also look for more resources and information in the RBUSD Social Emotional Resources document in your email. Seahawk Marketplace has been rescheduled to tomorrow after school in the Student Union. Support our student vendors by showing up. There will be an array of handcrafted items and treats. You don't want to miss it. When we come back from winter break, auditions will be underway for our spring musical Beauty and the Beast. Auditions will be held on January 4th for the dancing and January 8th, with Tech Crew auditions on the 11th. To sign up for auditions, join the Google Classroom, and I hope to see you in the musical. Also, take note that tomorrow will be a late start day and stack day with periods 1 through 6. And don't forget, tomorrow is PJ Day. So enjoy your last day of school for a break. Well, Seahawks is all for this week's broadcast. I'm Sienna Lewis. And I'm Melanie Wonkwo. Have a good winter break, and remember to keep, keep on soaring, Seahawks. Seahawks.